What's up everybody, I'm Yusuf Magid from the Ubisoft News team. We're fresh off the heels of the Ubisoft press conference and I'm here with Gab and Emil from the Beyond Good and Evil 2 team. Thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. Thank, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's a pleasure, yeah. So you guys debuted a brand new trailer that I think had everyone's jaw on the floor. Like any good trailer, it raised just as many questions as it answered. Uh, so we're gonna sit down, break down the trailer and maybe point out some things people missed. Great, we have a lot of things to tell you about this trailer, so let's go. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Okay, so first thing we see here is this galaxy. Uh, obviously, we're in space. Um, what exactly are we looking at here? The idea is that the area of the game Beyond Good and Evil 2 is going to take place in a very strange place where two galaxies are colliding and, you know, like kind of mixing with each other. Uh, getting in a little bit closer, and we see we're actually now on the rings of a, uh, of a planet, right? Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's actually a pretty incredible scene because the, um, uh, the asteroids that we see are so big that some of them uh, are as big as mountains. So you've got planetoids and, and it's a huge uh, ring of icy asteroids. And, and that's what gives you the impression that you're sort of going through the middle of a fjord or something like that. That's one of the things that we really wanted to take our time with and let people sort of immerse themselves in this notion of the vastitude of this huge universe that we're going to be playing in. Yeah, so from the vastitude, I love that word, uh, down to, you know, the, the microtude, maybe, uh, <laughs> we have here um, a, a look at a brand new character and what's a good space opera without characters. Uh, so maybe you could tell us a little bit about who this is. Yeah, and as you know, uh, characters are the real heart of uh, Beyond Good and Evil, and we're taking a look at one of the, uh, uh, the newest officers. This is the chief medical officer, and her name is Uma. And uh, she's this really interesting character, sort of a dubious oracle. And as you can see, she's, um, she's uh, marked with uh, uh, religious markings, which uh, represent the fact that she's a devotee of Shiva. Uh, and uh, as you can see from uh, the way she's, she's dressed and all of the, the beads that she's wearing, these are actual Hindu prayer beads that she has Indian origins. There's a huge connection with uh, technology and religion in this world, right? Can you, can you talk a little bit about what she's doing? Yeah, I think what we're trying to show here is that uh, in the far future, despite the fact that our characters are very attached to their um, original cultures from Earth, they obviously have very high tech. Um, and, and in this particular instance, Uma is using um, high tech acupuncture needles. They are turning red because they are um, seeing, you know, the intoxication in the blood of the pirate. He's been putting those needles into. We'll soon discover that the old crew is actually dead drunk. And so we get our first glimpse of who she's talking to, a familiar face. I think last year people sort of thought that uh, when they saw Zhu Yu Tzu, the, uh, the, the big hybrid from the criminal underworld, that, uh, that perhaps that was Paige. So it's pretty cool this year that uh, it actually is Paige. We're super excited about, about um, being able to reveal the fact that he's going to be in Beyond Good and Evil 2. So here, of course, Nox is also dead drunk, so just victim of Paige that Scooping also. Cool. And what I love now is that we get sort of an idea of the dynamics going on with the crew. Um, we saw Paige, we saw Uma, we see Knox sleeping up in the watchtower, and then Shawnee here sort of circling patrol. Yeah, um, uh, so again, the, the crew is, is a really vital part of uh, the gameplay. Uh, and so as a captain, we're going to be able to recruit our own crew. And it's the crew that's uh, going to allow us to develop um, our, our equipment, the equipment of our, our ship, our mothership, and also our other ships. And here we have a brand new character as well. Who's this guy? Uh, so this guy, his name is Callum, and he's got this amazingly sexy Scottish accent. <laughs> and, and he's our chief uh, engineer uh, in the game. And he's, he's just having a little game of chess with uh, his favorite partner. And here we have a character working the skull for now, which is the AI of the, of the ship. If you remember the trailer from last year, we were also seeing this skull in the... Um, in the command uh, deck of the, of the Gala. So you can imagine that this girl is at different location in the ship, but it's always the same AI uh, behind uh, this uh, character. Uh, keep laughing, fools. Keep and here, let's be very clear, all these bottles are bottles of rum. They're all alcohol. Paige has nothing else to put in his uh, dishes, so that's why most of the time the crew ends up dead drunk. But we think that this bottle is pretty special. It, maybe it's the uh, best rum, actually. Here you're seeing, you're seeing all sorts of uh, different hybrids. If you pose, you will see a shark, you will see a rhino. So, of course, you will have these characters uh, in the game. Come in. What have we got on the scanners? 
even if Nox is kind of a goofy character, he's actually very good at his job being in the cruise nest because he's going to spot the wave first and you don't even see the wave at that point. He has very keen eyes and he, and he knows that something wrong is happening and coming towards the ship. So now we see, as things start to go wrong, Shawnee's sort of separated a bit from her ship and she has to rush back. This is something that I know uh, is th things that players are going to be able to do, right? Jump out of their mothership, jump onto you know their own ship and fly around. That, is that right, Emil? Yeah, the, one of the key elements in our game is really the seamless aspect of the gameplay. At any point, when you're flying in space or above a planet, you can jump out your, uh, or your, out your, your spaceship and start flying with your jetpack and go inside another spaceship, board inside the spaceship, take the control of this ship, so everything is seamless. At any, at any point, you can do those, those things in the game, yeah. You can go from the, the smallest, most intimate space uh, in the game to the ends of the galaxy uh, without a single transition. And that's the real power of our uh, Voyager engine. OK, so this is a really interesting part. We've already met pretty much all these characters. So who's exactly in the middle here? Uh, that's Dakini, who is uh, at the helm. Uh, and uh, what's going on here is that from last year's trailer, uh, Dakini was the captain of this crew. And they're very much a family, as you could tell from the camaraderie that you can, that you can feel at the beginning of this trailer and also last year's trailer. Uh, and she's gone missing um, since uh, the last uh, the last trailer. So this trailer takes place um, uh, sometime after the first one, and the crew is sort of following up on the quest that Dakini was on, which was to discover the location of this legendary Moksha portal, which is sort of this mysterious um, artifact in deep space. Our two trailers are actually telling the stories that happened, the events that happened before the player. Uh, starts playing and go on a journey in, in this game. So we're basically building on those legendary character and we're building the world uh, of Beyond Good and Evil 2 and all the legends that people will be talking about. So here I think we finally get a sense of scale that's even greater than our already massive mothership here. Yeah, we can't say too much about this mysterious uh, massive spaceship, but as you can see, it's huge. It's far bigger than the Gala. It's already huge. Uh, the Gala is already, you know, 500 meters long, so you can imagine actually the size of these huge, massive things. And uh, the two massive arms of these ships are actually used to board uh, other spaceships. Uh, the troops, they will be, you know, moving inside those arms to board and get inside uh, the Gala, actually. So this is a super cool moment. So will players really be able to abandon their ship um, or jump right out of it and head back to their mothership via jetpack? Yes, we're showing here in the, in the trailer, it's really the relationship with uh, the fact that we have this seamless universe. Uh, you can go from fighting uh, a huge ship from the outside, being your fighter while someone else is boarding the interior of a, of a ship, and then you can join that ship, go inside and continue the fight. And again, all of that is done completely seamlessly. The emotional tension uh, and the drama comes a lot from the fact that you can see how uh, how concerned uh, Shani as the captain is to get back to the Gata. She's really struggling and uh, fighting against you know all of these 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 huge projectiles that are coming at her, and she's just worried about one thing: it's getting back to the crew as fast uh, as she can. Paige, uh, Paige, as you can see on this image, is carrying uh, Nox, who was wounded, and uh, and you can see how close these guys uh, are. They've probably been flying in space for a very long time in this crew, and they know each other very well, and they're always helping each other. So here we get our first glimpse of who attacks the Gata. Uh, Emil, who are these people? So fans would have probably recognized the alpha sections from the first Beyond Good and Evil game. You can see that they have the same symbol on their armor and also, of course, of course the red light uh, coming out from their helmet. We're not saying too much about these guys, but there are definitely uh, alpha sections, yeah. So I think this is the moment everyone wants to talk about. Jade is here between the two alpha section soldiers. What is she doing? What happened? So she's uh, definitely a younger Jade, actually, uh, in, this, in this game because it's a prequel. And uh, there are lots of legend in the universe of Beyond Good Evil 2 about this young girl uh, slaying pirates, hunting down pirates in this universe. So everybody's afraid of that young girl and she's something of a legend. And again, we can't say too much about uh, her and her actual role, but pirates are very afraid of, uh, of this young girl. You can see her, uh, her katana, her saber, and you can see blood uh, on, the, on the blade. And we really here want to show that Jade has been killing uh, people before she arrives at the end of this corridor. So we're really stressing the fact that she's pretty evil, I guess. And so what I think is interesting, too, is that Paige recognizes her. Right? And this being a you know, prequel to Beyond Good and Evil 1, 
What has their relationship been before this point? Um, so that's something we want to let players discover for themselves, uh, the time between the moment when Dakini uh, disappears and uh, when Paige sees Jade and recognizes her. Uh, and obviously he's seen her before, but that's definitely part of the story that players are going to discover during the game. People who know Beyond Good and Evil 1 know that Jade has a dark past, that she wasn't a nice girl all her life, that she wasn't this uh, journalist we meet in Beyond Good and Evil 1. Uh, so in Beyond Good and Evil 2, we're going to explain this dark past and explain yeah, where she's coming from, basically. Again, the scary, the scary aspect uh, of Jade and this aggressive aspect is something new, something that people haven't seen before. I have to say, this has me infinitely hyped for Beyond Good and Evil 2. Uh, so Emil, Gab, thank you so much for helping us break down the trailer, and we can't wait to see more. Thank you. Thank you. Like and share if you enjoy the video and think others might benefit from this. And of course, subscribe and hit the notification button if you are new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video.